Hi, welcome to the video. In this one, we're just gonna have a bit of a closer look at some of the stuff behind me from this video, which you may have seen, you may not. If not, go back and watch it first. It was a three-parter. But in this one, I'm just gonna like give you a little bit of a closer look at a few things and a bit more information because it just seems a shame to not do something else when it's all out already like this. And I didn't go into much detail in the last one. So here we go. I've said before, I'm not really like a massive expert on any particular thing, but the more you pick these things up, the more you learn, the more of an expert you become. Now, there's some things always that are new. I like to pick up new things, and I'm sorry about the seagulls, but we're gonna have to just work through that because I live in Blackpool after all. But here we've got like the manga books. I don't know much about them. I don't, but most of what I know, I know from watching other people on YouTube, basically, and Instagram. I know of a few things, like this, Digimon. I know of Digimon, but like for this to be, actually be the most valuable item in here, which it is, I just wouldn't have thought that. But there you go, you just, you just got to check this stuff out, because you just never know. I also want this video to be kind of somewhere that people can come and share some ideas and share a bit of knowledge themselves in the comments, so... Is there any particular manga series that you recommend, either that you just like watching it or reading it, or you know, that's particularly good to resell? Let me know, or let everyone know in the comments. So these pencil sharpens right here are by a brand called Play Me. As I said before, like the, the, the kind of thing that you would have got when you went to a museum in, in school, like a school trip to a museum or a castle. And you'd get one of these when you're in the souvenir shop afterwards. The kind of common ones are like the little catapult, trebuchet things. Um, I've actually got a couple of them myself. Does anybody remember the TV adverts of these? Anybody remember the video where I picked these up? A couple of them brand new from a shop fairly recently. They went for fairly good money in the end. I've mentioned many times in videos in the past, but I actually used to live in Berlin. I grew up in Berlin just for a few years when I was about eight, nine, ten years old. And I love all the kind of vintage German stuff now. I'm guessing it's because I used to live there for uh, that kind of time period. And these can do okay. They vary quite a bit depending on what it is, you know, what the design is and what place. They usually have like a place name on them. Yeah, this now is like, I don't know, four or five in the last two or three months of the exact same one. But these always do quite well, but they are quite often slightly damaged, so that's something you've got to bear in mind when you're picking them up. So they're by a company called Rayware, and oh, on this particular one, you can just about see it. But it's obviously not been printed very well when they've made it. I was going to show you the logo. I'll maybe put it on the screen now. Just to show you what to look out for. If you're interested in picking them up yourself. And this is absolutely full of these guys. Let me empty them out. So this is the Shurik brand. Most of the time, it has the actual name Shurik on the bottom. Sometimes it just has the numbers. So, something to bear in mind. So, if it's West Germany, obviously, it was pre-1989 when the Berlin Wall came down. I was actually in Berlin when the wall came down. I was there when they were kind of knocking pieces off. They were, like, giving it out to everyone. And I've still got a load of bits of wall in my attic and a display plaque in my dining room as well. This is a very, very large bread bin, this one. Really heavy. There is the logo you need to look for. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, right? This kind of design, but people do like it. Search Port, Mer Port Merion on eBay and you'll see. There's a lot of items that I've shown which it's very difficult to kind of put a price on. This is one of them. And there's several others as well, including these. Now, if you've got the Tupperware, Tupper Wave stuff, which I've mentioned in previous videos, that's worth really good money. But who's to say that these are 
I really don't know. So I put these really low in how much I think I can resell them for, but they might actually be worth a lot more. But what I'll do, if I can find these out there, I'll put some sold comps on the screen right now. So I'm quite new to build, buying these barn mats. Like I see a lot of other resellers buying them, flipping them for a good profit. So I've just started buying them. I've just started noticing them a bit more. But I only get the ones that are a bit more vivid. So you got to think when people are scrolling on eBay, they probably just most of the time they're probably not after a specific one like Kingfisher. They're probably just after a bar mat for the home bar or for their pub and you want to just you know catch their eye and with this kind of thing and this goes for everything really i think on ebay if it's a bit of an unusual design vibrant kind of colors it stands out more as long as you get good photographs of it you can make it stand out a lot more than something that's just plain so i try and stay away from the things that are just a plain color obviously there are exceptions you're, just, you're probably thinking oh why did you pick that up well they sell it's as simple as that but if that was exactly the same but the colorful one that they do with the fruit design they go a lot better and i wonder if maybe that's part of the reason why like these pigs do quite well because you can get some really nice photographs you can you know, get some good photographs of the artwork on them and maybe that's part of their appeal you can make them look really nice so i'll be interested to see how much this actually goes for this one now it's not in perfect condition, unfortunately, but I did actually buy it off somebody who seemed like they were a collector or a trader at least. So yeah, I don't know, it's hard to say. Maybe there's not maybe there's not that much money in it. But I only paid three pounds fifty. And this is exactly the kind of thing I would definitely just keep for myself and display somewhere no problem but if it's worth anything like you know even half of the price of the one that i found in america then i will sell it so with these cookie jars they do they did a lot of stuff in the 90s i don't know if they still do stuff now or not but do you remember those peanut head guys that i bought from a charity shop i got a couple of them they with the same brand as well so it's fun demental 2 that's t double o limited if you kind of search that on ebay you'll get all sorts of weird and wacky things coming up go and check it out and then next time you're out and about maybe you'll see one they're kind of rare so they don't show up all the time but as soon as i saw this before i'd even looked at the brand i knew what it was i double checked at the back and yeah it's what i thought it was Alright, so while I've been at work, the shed arrived and Claire's been building it. Just need the roof on now. It's definitely a two person job, the roof. So that's what we're going to do now. And then we'll move the shelving in. I've got a few more shelves like this. I've just been to B&Q and bought three more. So the roof is on. Just got a few more of these screws to put in around the other side. So the final thing is these screws, 12 of them. So it's actually two days later now, the shed is up just over there. Now ideally we were going to put it here, it would have been perfect, it would have looked a lot better here as well. But this tree, the jutty out bit there and here. It's just, you know, a tiny bit too much. So it's not, doesn't fit there. So we've had to settle for it being over there. I've got this light to go in the shed. Quite a large one. But it had good reviews, like really good reviews. Amazon recommended this department. And I got like, it was 20% off and I got 15% off. I got it for about just under 20 quid. This is one that's on a sensor and it's supposed to be really bright. And I'm hoping one will be enough to light the little shed. And if it's any good, I'm going to get one for the big shed as well. Because the ones I've got in there, they just don't last very long. The battery changing the batteries all the time. Oh, it's one that takes D batteries, but according to Amazon, 
this should last for 300 days I think it said if it's turned on three times a day for a certain amount of time if it lasts three months without me having to change the batteries I'll be happy with that to be honest so we did manage to get five shells in with a little gap here which seems like the perfect place to maybe put a golf bag with some golf clubs in I don't know we'll see just trying to decide where to put this probably up here I think Yeah, so making quite a dent in this. So the idea is most ceramics, or at least like all like the jars, but not the bread bins, move into the other shed. And probably like things like maybe the glassware, or maybe like the oddities like this, like this kind of ceramic house. These bits. This is all gonna stay, it's like mug, mug city over here and Tupperware towers is staying up here as well. There we go, I just wanted to check it when it's completely dark, just to make sure that it does give out enough light. It does. I'm pretty impressed actually. From one light. I think I might get another couple of these for the main shed. So yeah, I did end up getting another one of those lights in here. And it gives out plenty of light, even when it's absolutely pitch black outside. It's enough for in here. Yeah, those little lights that I got really no good, hard to give out any light at all. A few weeks later, and this is what it now looks like. Very full. I put a load of stuff down here. Not permanent. It was just until I get it listed, and then it'll be moving back in there, most of it, and the ceramics in here. Definitely glad we did this. It gives a little bit of breathing room in the main shed now. So this is the first time I've ever found a keeper. I did find a key for a keeper quite recently. End of last year, I found one. Well, I say found one. It was in with a load of civilian families. I actually sold that for almost as much as this is worth the whole thing. Well, minus the key. So, yeah, it's what I say. Like It's often the parts for these things, you know, the... The action figures, it's the it's the accessories, the weapons and the accessories that are often worth more than the figure itself. So it's definitely worth learning about these things. Google image search with things like this is definitely your best friend, especially for parts, because otherwise you find a little sword for something, you probably, unless you really, really know your stuff, you're not gonna know what it's for. Thoughts on these? yeah i don't know what to say really obviously there's a bit of controversy about everything i know all the dvds and everything went up in price didn't they but what do we think i don't know i'll let you discuss that in the comments yeah these lego games most of these i find are really not worth a lot at all not a lot which just doesn't seem right sometimes, especially when it's like a rare one like this. I've never ever seen this before. You would think it would have a decent amount of value, wouldn't you? But no, even if it's new, really not worth that much. So, Magnets is a recent thing of mine. I've just been recently kind of dabbling in them, seeing which ones do well, which ones don't. It's still a work in progress, so I don't have that much to tell you about them. But if they're old, vintage 
from like nostalgic kind of TV shows and things like that. Disney is always a good one. Theme park stuff is always good. Yeah, anything like that. Worth a go, you know, if you can get them cheap enough. Somebody, somebody you know, selling off their collection, something like that. It might be worth giving it a go. See what happens. Bundle them up. Sell the few of them individually. I mean, a lot of the people that have bought the ones I've been selling have actually been buying them and then reselling them individually. So, fair play to them. Not something I want to get involved with, really, on a mass scale, but if it's working for them, then good on them. Yeah, so this is very faded compared to how it should be, but some people are actually asking well over £100 for this when it's in good, good condition and not so faded. I would say that maybe with it being so faded, it looks a bit older and it looks a little bit nicer perhaps it, it doesn't but that's probably something like what my description will say uh, there's still money in it you know it works check it out still working absolutely fine which i'm kind of amazed by i don't know how i would stop this getting broken in transit i mean the glass is fine it's all these bits inside i'd be worried about them moving around i think i'd probably just have to send it like that really well packaged but you know you kind of do that too much and it's gonna just break eventually so let's talk about tupperware shall we everybody clicks off the video <laughs> all at once but very briefly yeah it, it's hit and miss you find all sorts of different wild kind of random colors and variations of the same thing some are better than others. I find like the more vibrant or unusual colours, like the oranges, the kind of blues and the greens, tend to do better than the browns and the beige and stuff. Like that plain kind of cream slash off-white colour, that will sit for a long time before it sells. The one thing saving this is the heart shape. If that wasn't heart shaped, I probably wouldn't have bothered with that one, to be honest. Yes, it's only a pound, but you've got to store it. You've got to sit on it for a while before it eventually goes. Obviously, it's an easy ship, though, and it does sell. So that's a good thing. Yeah, who remembers these? Viewmaster. I've got a few of these already, actually. Which I did buy to resell, but I've kind of kept hold of them for now. These are all a bit random, these ones. A bit more modern. You've got, like, SpongeBob and stuff on that one. A load of Disney ones. Some of them can do well. I got one previously and it had a load of Blackpool um, like sites and attractions from like the 70s, I think. That was kind of cool. Yeah, look at this. McDonald's restaurant. Why don't they still make toys anyway? I don't know. Well, not like this anyway. See the actual little kitchen there and if you look up in the corner up there you got like a little car like a little TV screen like on like in the drive-through yeah this is quite faded which is unfortunate but is what it is for a pound cannot complain so South Park stuff can do quite well the plushes, key rings, pencil cases, various other things, mugs and things like that. As long as they're like the old... As long as they're the ones from the late 90s, they tend to do quite well. I look this guy up, he is worth about 20 pounds. This one, about 10 to 12, paid a pound each on them. So glasses, I know nobody wants to ship these things. I get it, I do. But just bear in mind that you can usually pick these up for really cheap. Now you just wanna go for the ones that... You just wanna go for the ones that will stand out a bit. Much like I was saying about the beer mats over there. It's the same with things like this. I mean, this is gonna stand out a hell of a lot more than just a plain glass that says any brand name on it, do you know what I mean? 
they will never sell. These will sell no problem. People are selling them in twos and they're getting 14 pounds plus postage for them all day. Um, I reckon I can get a bit more than that. I've got beer mats that I can put with them as well. We've got a load of video game manuals here. Check out some of these games. Super Mario Galaxy. Some kind of A to Z of like tips and cheats, I think. Another Mario one. Diddy Kong Racing. Classic game, that. I'm a Diddy Kong Racer more than I am Mario Kart. Is that controversial? I do like Mario Kart as well. But Diddy Kong Racing on the N64, personally my favourite of the karting games. PlayStation World, N64, Compendium. So I bought all these from a trader who was selling video games. Um, a bit of other stuff as well. Pop culture, kind of comics and whatnot. But mostly video games. And he didn't really have much value on these. So he wanted a pound each. I got them all for 12 to 17. So I basically got a fiver off. But he obviously doesn't think much of these. But I've done okay with these. Mainly because I used to have a little collection of these myself. And I sold them all off over the years. So I know that some of them. Not all of them. Some of them. But that's what you do with these bundles of things. You know, these bulk lots of things. Like the PC games as well. Most of them are not going to be worth much, but you paid very, very little for them. They were less than 10p each. These were, you know, what, 80p each, less than that, 60p each, something like that. Worth a go. Look at this. How weird is this? If you've got small children, don't let them see this, what I'm about to show you. I'm about to turn it over. I've been hiding this from my kids because it's, uh, yeah... Well, you'll see what I mean. Look at that. Evil. I've never heard of this, but when I searched it, there's like, I believe there's like movies or TV series of it or something. I have no idea what it is, but yeah. Demonic toys play at your own risk. Not my kind of thing, but you know, each their own. But there's a good selection here. I'm kind of new to comic books as well, to be honest. I picked up that big bundle from, the, where was it? Ashbourne, near Stoke-on-Trent. Uh, to be honest, I'll be honest, still haven't listed them at the time of filming this. That's not because they're not worth anything, because they are, I just haven't got round to it. It's one of those things that, there's so many of them, I will obviously just do them all in one go. And it's just, keep putting it off a bit but i should just get them on because they are worth good money and this one this was sat on top this is what caught my eye street fighter special poster inside which is just this i'll show you very quickly yeah so i think somebody would pay a good few pounds just for that if you frame that put it on your wall that's pretty cool right so that's it, I'm going to leave this there. I hope there was a little bit of information there. I don't want to kind of bombard you too much. And, you know, obviously if you've already seen the other videos, you're already going to have heard a bit of this already. So I just wanted to, while this stuff was all here, just kind of give you my take on why, I, why it is I picked this stuff up. Because some people are like, you know, really? You pick up cookie jars, you pick up bread bins. Like, why do you do that? Is it worth it? Well, yeah. It is, if you've been watching for any kind of length of time, you'll know that it is. Do I always make a perfect decision on everything? No. Is Do I sometimes buy things and it was, you know, just doesn't, never sells? Yes, of course. Like, that is just part of it. As I say, things change. You'll comp something out, you'll search something, and it'll be going for good money. You'll buy it, you'll list it, and it just sits there. You know, things change. Things change, but... If you're buying from a car boot sale or charity shop as long as you're not going crazy with, with what you're paying for stuff it's very difficult not to make a profit it's very difficult and it is good to niche down on things but it keeps it interesting picking up new things and you know i've only been reselling for a few years and you've really got to like i don't know there's certain things that i've said before like i would like to just sell video games and nothing else 
but I just don't find that many. And not only that, listing video games all day would be a bit boring, wouldn't it? You don't want to be completely bored by what you're doing, otherwise you're not going to keep doing it. You want a bit of variation. It's good to kind of learn new things and I don't know, what have I picked up here that's kind of new? Like the, all these manga books, new to me, 30 quid. It's a lot of money, 30 quid to just get on a load of books. They might have been worthless, they might have been. But you gotta, you know, you gotta buy these things, give them a go. Usually, if you pay, even if you're paying 30 quid for them, they're gonna be worth that, right? They're gonna be, at least you're gonna break even on them. And if they don't and you lose a few pounds, you've learned a lesson. That's the way I look at it. You know, I've kind of learned the hard way. I've bought a lot of things that have taken a long time to sell. And then just you steer away from them. You go for the stuff that sells a bit more often and you're always learning, always changing up the way you do things. That's the way I do it. That's my opinion on it anyway. That's it for now. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one.